So in the previous episode, we didn't really do a whole heck of a lot. I mean, we got a new armor set and I killed the Kingslayer a couple more times in order to get the stuff that I needed in order to make the armor set. But today, uh, we're, we're going to work on Plantera. I'm just going to go get Plantera dead and I'm looking forward to that. Got a fun uh, story, actually a couple stories for you, for you guys today. Uh, but first, before we jump in. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the shield generator. I had someone commented. I don't, I apologize. I don't remember who it was. It was one of those ones that I read like in the morning when I woke up, I was really tired and I forgot to go back to it, but I had a good point. They said, it seems like when you get hit while using the shield and, and it breaking and then receiving the double damage, um, that I'm receiving too much damage from it. It's, it's kind of insane. The amount of just huge hits that I'm taking it doesn't really seem all that worth it. And you know what? I think, I think you're right because I went and watched the footage back on the last uh, episode where I was using it and I'd be fine, I'd be fine, I'd be fine and then all of a sudden I take a hit and I'm almost dead and it's like well if I had just taken the normal couple hits there I wouldn't be as low as I am so it kind of feels a little too punishing for my particular play style especially as playing as melee so we're gonna try to take it off for a little bit let's like open up my map and see if that helps out. Um, also for Plantaria, I think I'm just going to go ahead and commit to using the Death Sickle. I think this is just a good weapon for me versus Plantaria, so I think that is going to work. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, uh, let's go to the jungle. So I'm going to have to make, obviously, uh, an arena, but I kind of want to try and find some turtle shells because while I may not be using it right away I do plan on using the beetle armor once we kill the um the what you might call it yeah that that guy you know the goal there we go <laughs> got there eventually so I think that's what we're gonna do I think we're gonna attempt to um get get some turtle shells while I'm down here actually you know what? I really need to go back and get a arena thing right what was it called um it's not an arena it's called a in, I thought it was like an insta arena. Am I right? Insta bridge. Da, 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 instavator. Really? There's an instavator? A bomb that creates a elevator instantly. Oh. I should really use that in the next series. That's really useful. Insta track. Mine track across the whole world. That's good. Insta bridge. Yeah. No, no. It was, um, it was a bomb thing. All right. I'm going to have to look it up. So it's a city buster. I actually used a feature that I've almost never used in uh, the magic storage, which is just switching it to show the mods and then scrolling down and seeing what we got here. And so I, I know I need to make a city buster. I need 50 dynamite and fallen stars. I actually might go ahead and get two of them and just make a big old arena. Now, here's the thing. I didn't know I could do this. Omni bridge of fire. So the Omni station, um, actually, let's just go ahead and bring it up real quick real quick while I'm at it. So an Omni station is this little item that um, gives you a bunch of different bonuses, basically like all of the things that you would normally put down, like a, a the bass statue, the um, this is the, a Fargo's mod for the, the semi station, which gives you vanilla buff stations. It's like honeys, um, the, the carded gnome that you need and the golden ladybug and then you got titanium so you basically make it and it just makes like a station that just super buffs you so grants honey when touched greatly increases the luck when nearby effects of all vanilla buff stations right super nice but then there's just like straight up a a bridge of fire so it says upgrades the platform you're standing on to use omni stations so i might make an insta bridge and upgrade our platform that goes across the the top there because yeah that would be really nice to have wouldn't it like we have this bridge that goes all the way across because of the 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 thingy magic and you know what having omni stations all the way across that will make doing like uh moon lord way easier so I, I really should consider that i didn't even know that that was a thing maybe that's a new thing into fargo's uh fargo's mutant mod i don't know right what was it called uh city buster i need i need a dynamite right city buster how much dynamite did it take? 50, 50 dynamite it takes. Goodness, people trying to put me out of business. Okay, I got my city buster. So let me, let me tell you a little funny story. Um, so the past like month, we've been noticing that our seven-year-old is, she's sleepwalking. 
So like it, it takes about roughly an hour, I would say, after she goes to sleep, anywhere between an hour and like two hours, um, she like wakes up without fail <laughs> and just starts like doing really weird things. Sometimes it's she's just walking around, you know? She's just walking around and you're like, all right, you okay? She doesn't respond. She just kind of stands there awkwardly, just kind of staring at you. And you're like, all right, I guess taking you back to bed. All right, there's a plantera bulb right there. That works just fine. I'm gonna come down here and make the arena probably right down here. I think that'll work really well. So <laughs> the funny thing is, right, we're, we're watching her do this like, um, this really funny just sleepwalking like there's no other way to ex describe it other than strange very strange and in some ways creepy i'll talk about the creepy part but uh last night we were watching the uh, the second episode of the last of us right oh hold on this is gonna get loud all right i always skip over that in the edit because it's always super loud anyways um so we're watching the second episode of the last of us and we hear their door open, so we like pause it because th where we're currently living, the their room after a, um, a hallway like empties out in the living room where we have our TV. So it's like, well, we just don't want to give her nightmares if she's actually awake, right? So let's just uh, let's just kind of <laughs> pause it. We watch her. She walks to where the office is and stops. Okay, it just stands there in the hall rubs her eyes and then just stands there and kind of turns around in a circle, continues to stand there. Like, what is she doing? <laughs> it's so funny. And uh, then, you know, this is when it kind of starts getting creepy. She comes out to where we are and she's in the kitchen and it's just kind of staring at us. So my wife is like, hey, you, you okay? You need anything? Have a bad dream? And she just doesn't respond. She just stares at us. Like a creeper, a yeah, really weird, like creepy look with like her just fairly long hair. It's like draped over her face, like straight up, like out of the ring kind of thing. And we're like, this is really weird. It's creepy, especially after watching The Last of Us, the second episode where creepy things are happening in the show, right? Where was this plane terrible before I got too far away? Aha, uh -huh, right here. So I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need some stuff for this arena, I think. So I'm gonna head back before um before i die down there so anyways we're watching she's just being really creepy she's sitting there staring at us and after about a minute i well after about 10 seconds i pull out my phone i'm recording because i want to show her what she's doing she just has no recollection of it the next day obviously because she's sleepwalking and so she's staring at us and after about a minute my wife calls her over gives her a hug says good night and then i i take her back to her room and put her in bed now, the previous night before that I heard a noise out in the living room. I was in the middle of recording and I heard a noise. I'm like, okay, fine. I am I know that someone's probably up or sleepwalking or whatever. My wife texts me, hey, I think I think she's sleepwalking. I was like, okay, fine. Well, I'll go take care of her after I'm done recording because I was in the middle of something. And then <laughs> I go out there and she's at our island in our kitchen, just asleep, she's sitting on a stool, just out, like with her head down on the island. And I kind of wake her up and take her back to bed. She doesn't remember anything of that, of that at all. But about two or three weeks ago, where it really started kind of getting weird and creepy, she comes into the office and she's talking to me. Like she's asleep, but she's straight up talking to me. She's crying and she says she needs help with something. I say, okay, what do you need help with? She says, I need help getting my stuff. I said, what do you mean getting your stuff? You don't, what stuff? She goes out into the hallway outside of our office and is like, like gesturing, like my stuff over here. So I get up and I come out with her and she points at the floor where there is nothing on the ground. Uh, there, uh, within five feet, there was a pumpkin and that was it. And that like, she's just gesturing in the middle of the bare floor, like, like frustrated with me, like my stuff. Like she's looking at me saying my stuff, I need help. Can, pick, can you pick up my stuff? I'm just looking, I'm like, there is nothing there. It kind of felt like when a game glitches. <laughs> And they're like, hey, here's this quest item that you need to pick up in the game. And you're like, uh, the game's telling me there's a quest item here. Everything's leading here, but there ain't nothing here. Like, Crap. Do I restart? Do I have to look up on a forum of like what happens with this? If I, like, that's what it felt like. It was, I, I felt like it was being gaslit by, 
<laughs> by this seven year old who's just like, there's stuff on the ground. It's mine. I need you to help me pick it up. And I was like, I, and this was the first time that it happened where she was like coherent and talking to me coherently, but completely out of it. So I take her back to bed, put her in bed. And then about a week ago, so this is like in between the the stuff and then, you know, now, um, I, I hear her crying in a room. Oh my gosh, she's, she's sleepwalking. So I go in there and just like full on Blair Witch Project is standing in the corner just crying. <laughs> scares the crap out of me. I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't like this at all. This is going like full like demonic possession kind of thing. Like this is that's how the conjuring starts or something, you know? Like this is what I'm thinking in my head. And then in between that, so in between a week ago and now, there was one day where I walked out and she was just standing in the hallway. And I swear she freaks me the hell out sometimes because like I have my door closed to the office when I'm recording, like I am now, right? <laughs> And then I have to like go get water. So like I finish recording, I edit, I go up, I open the door and I walk out. But her, her room is like down the hallway from the office. So I open the door and I start walking out. All the lights are off except for the, the like hood light above the oven in the, in the kitchen, which is illuminating some. And I'm walking, I see this just dark figure out of the corner of my eye at the end of the hallway, just standing there with her hair over her face, creepily staring at me. Oh. Oh, I'll tell you what, that is, that is a way that you, yeah, yeah, you wake yourself up. And I had just had like a cup of coffee right before recording that night. <laughs> okay. Oh, I need buffs. That was what I came back for. So I had just had a cup of, of coffee. So like the, the heart rate just shot up through the roof and whew, it kept me up. I, I, I ended up staying up to like four o'clock that night. <laughs> it was, it was bad. It was really bad. All right. That if you have any uh, sleepwalking stories, you let me know. Uh, apparently, it's totally normal for her to be sleepwalking, and it it, it will go away as she as she ages out of it. But it's like, man, I'll tell you what, I got some some scary moments. So let me know if you have any scary stories or funny stories or anything about sleepwalking because I love I love hearing that kind of stuff and it kind of makes me feel better. I'm like I'm not I'm not alone <laughs> in having to deal with this. Um, was there any other kind of buffs that I'm going to need from this? Probably not. Let's go get, I'm hoping I could just one shot Plantera, not one shot her, but do it in one attempt because I don't want to have to go find another Plantera bulb. Although I do believe that Fargo's has, uh, a, a Fargo's, um, mutant mod may have a summon that I'm able to craft, which would be really nice compared to having to do this the old fashioned way. I got to go put some platforms in and get it all cleaned out down there. So that way. We can actually do the fight properly, but hopefully we can do this fairly rapidly without screwing ourselves. Oh, the other thing with the um, the sleepwalking is like I, I I I find it creepy. Obviously, it should be creepy because it is. Um, but I also kind of feel bad for her. It's like, well, she's just like waking up in the middle of the night. I, you know, what happens if I go to bed at like an actual reasonable time and I come out like the next morning, my wife comes out the next morning and she's just like passed out on the floor because that's where she happened to fall asleep. Like, I don't want that to happen. I don't want her getting bad sleep because she's sleeping on the floor or anything. So I feel bad about that. But it is also there's a level of hilarity going on with it um, that that I think outpaces the level of this is too spooky for me. <laughs> I don't like this. Especially when we're like watching things like The Last of Us or I don't know. I mean, my wife, my wife and I, we like to watch some scary stuff. I don't like playing scary games. I will play a scary game every now and again for the channel. So, you know, if, if you have a game that's coming out or something that you really want me to do, you let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll consider everything. Like, I I hold it true that to this day, the, la or it's the last of us, the, the um, playthrough I did of... Resident Evil 7 is one of the best things I've done on the channel. Um, I did it with someone who is a friend of mine and was doing videos with me at the time. So it was fun. It was a, it was a fun little experience, but um, it's been a long time since I've done something like that. Maybe I should, maybe, um, I mean, I had proposed it at the beginning of the year. Maybe I do some Last of Us uh, remastered on the PC when it comes out later this year. Maybe I do that. Maybe, maybe that's a fun thing or maybe there's other creepy spoopy games that I might um, get invested into 
between now and then. I've always wanted to do the Dark Picture Anthology games. I can't believe I died to that. I had just healed. Like, I literally hit H and I died at the exact same time. Um, I kind of thought about doing the Dark Picture Anthology series. I liked a couple of those games. Unfortunately, I it's, it's hard to do a series on it if I already know the games, right? So that's, that, that's a toughie because like, um, oh, what was that third one? What was the name of it? I'm trying to remember the name of it. Oh goodness. It's the one that has all the military people in it. That freaking dark picture anthology is actually incredible. It's probably one of my favorite things that, uh, they've, they've put out. But I've always had an idea of maybe doing that kind of stuff with my wife, like doing a playthrough of those games um, with my wife, because I think that would be really funny <laughs> doing like the whole pass the controller thing where she plays certain characters and I play certain characters. And when she screws up and people die and I'm like, well, you know, that's on you. And people get angry at, at you know, me for allowing her to do that. Then I think that there's some funny stuff to happen there. You know, I'm doing myself a disservice. I really should just be using the insta bridges, the mini insta bridges here, because this is taking for freaking ever, and I'm just not able to do it without all of this. Oh my goodness! I knew it. I knew I was gonna die. I just can't, I can't put the freaking things down. There's just projectiles everywhere. Either it's wasps or other crap. It's so annoying. I just, this is the worst part of the jungle when you put an arena like this. It's just always just hundreds of things spawning on top of you, trying to kill you. It's, it's not my favorite. I hate it. I, I, I like the jungle in general until this kind of stuff happens. I go, I don't want to do plant hair. I really don't. I, uh, go do more queen slime. I think that would be a better use of my time. So I actually have a, the second story to tell you guys as well. I almost completely forgot about it, which my wife told me I probably would. So haha, -ha, jokes on her. Um, the other day when I made the episode talking about going to Costco and everything, one of the things I left out because I didn't think it was relevant at the time was that my, the, the seven-year-old one who's doing the sleepwalking, uh, jinxed the oldest. And, you know, if you don't know what that is, it's, it's a thing that I, I haven't really seen it in a while, honestly, since actually, since I was a kid, every now and again, you, you, I guess you hear it, but it's a thing, at least in the U S that if you say something at the exact same time as someone else, like the, the, the same thing you can call jinx. And we were on the way to Costco. It, what that means, I'll explain in a second, but we were on the way to Costco and the seven year old does that to the oldest who is 11. And they, they kind of laugh about it. And I brought it up to them. I was like, do you know, do you know the rules of that? They're like, what do you, what do you mean? There's rules. <laughs> like they had no idea. I was like, yeah, when I was a kid, we had rules. To, to doing jinx is if you if you jinxed somebody if you said something and you called jinx before they could the result was that um they were not allowed to speak yeah they weren't they weren't allowed to speak maybe maybe this is kind of something that you've heard about um or have experienced but yeah you just you totally weren't allowed to speak the only way that it could be broken was either if the person who jinxed you said that you can then speak or if you, if you got someone to say your name, not in like, um, so because we were kids at the time when we did this, not in like a, a calling you way, like not being like, you know, Hey, so-and-so and it's -so, using your name, but in like a, like a sentence, like, you know, Oh, could you believe what so-and-so did? You know, that kind of thing. Because if, if you could do it the other way, it just, it was too easy to get people to, to actually say your name. So you either had to have one of those two things happen. So you had to be kind of clever about how you got out of it. And if you ever broke it um, without using the rules, you owed that person uh, a soda. So you had to like go and buy them a soda. That was just kind of the rules we used as a kid. So I explained this to them. And what ended up happening is the oldest, he got frustrated because the youngest was being super smart about it. So, and then we were trying to buy him some glasses at the same time we were at Costco. So it was just kind of one of those, we had to have him talk anyway. So we just kind of ended it. But that, I thought that was the end of the story until today when I'm sitting in the, do I have everything down for this? I'm trying to pick up the turtle shell here. <laughs> when I was sitting in the kitchen with my wife and it was just us, the kids were at school, but we had our, our toddler. And she was about to, to do something we asked her not to. Like, she, she 
knows that she was not supposed to do it. It was one of those things where we gave her multiple warnings. Like, don't, don't do it. She looks at us and she, you know, she's crafty. So she's like, well, how far can I push my boundary here? You know, so she's like, I'm going to do it. We're like, don't do it. And so her and I both say at the same time, do we need to spank your butt? Because anytime she goes to do something like that, we just swat her on the butt. She doesn't listen to us. Not hard or anything. It's just, she, it's really funny too, because when we say that, she just instantly backs down. So it's, it's a thing that we mostly say and almost never do. And she, so my wife and I say it at the exact same time in the exact same way. And she yells jinx. And it was such a funny little thing because it was a nice little callback and it cracked me up. And then I abided to it until I didn't, until I thought it was ridiculous because I needed to talk to her about something big going on that her and I are, are going, uh, you know, are going to have to discuss pretty, uh, pretty frequently. But again, this kind of all ties back into the happy thing. Well, I'll, I'll talk about it when I'm, when I'm capable of doing so, but the, <laughs> The it's just a funny little callback. It cracked me up. All right, now Plantera, let's let's get in here. Let's use this weapon. I think that this weapon is, like I said before, gonna be our money weapon for this. Um, you can do it just right, where it does a lot of damage if you get Plantera to line up properly. And then on top of that, you also get the uh, benefit of using this weapon in the final phase with all the things and and because of just the way that the weapon works it does a lot of damage it just does a lot of damage versus all the little um sprouts tentacle sprouts i don't know what are they called who knows it doesn't really matter i think it, as long as i can avoid the bouncing things on the bottom and keep my health relatively high this fight should be fairly easy plantera was a fight that i struggled with for quite a long time back when i don't know actually i guess I guess I returned to Terraria with, with 1.4. Like, I hadn't played in a while. And it had been, like, several years. So I returned to Terraria with 1.4, and then I just struggled when I first returned. Here we go with the phase transition. Struggled trying to kill this boss, and, and I finally figured it out after some time, which is mostly using everybody else's strategy of the arena here, and then also using weapons like this. But this is not going well. I got kind of screwed there. I did not do that properly. My wings don't last long enough to get me from the bottom up to the top. Wow, that sucks. <laughs> I gotta get a plantera bulb and try that again. I actually might try a different weapon because I, I had a thought about halfway through that that the glaives might work really, really well against, um, against her. But also, maybe the blind justice will too? Uh, let's see here. Bulb. We need a bulb because we need to be able to summon that boss without having to run all over the place. Bulb. Uh, oh goodness. Plantera? There's a, there's definitely a way. Someone's Dr. Bones. Plantera fruit. There we go. So I need Chlorophyte, Moonglow, and Blink Root. I think I have Chlorophyte, right? I thought I did. Um, I do have Chlorophyte. Okay, so if I do, what was it called? Just Plantera's fruit. Yeah, we can make one right now. Bam. I'm going to have to get new buffs. Uh, oh, and I never even used my armor ability. I'm I'm messing up here. This is, this is pretty bad. All right, I'm going to buff and go again before things start spawning. Makes it a lot easier if I don't have to worry about a bunch of freaking wasps shooting at me, right? Um, let's let's attempt to use this weapon. Wait, why does, why does spawn with the little whitey things? Does it normally do that? Am I crazy? Am I just noticing it now because I'm using this weapon and it's... It's aiming for them rather than Plantera. That actually might be the case. That's fine. We can we can try this weapon out. Well, I'm taking taking hits here because I'm not fighting the same way I was previously. Maybe if I keep a little closer to the boss and actually try to true melee, that seemed like a bad idea. Oh, you know what? We never tried the fist. Let's fist her. Yeah, that's not gonna work. I'm just gonna take too much damage. All right, that's fine. The blind justice it is for now. Um, I could also try to hammer her. I didn't consider that. I mean, that does a lot of damage when it hits, right? So, I don't think it's, like, hyper good because I'm just running into projectiles. All right, let's play smarter. Let's play smart. I'm not really playing smart this, this go. And I can. I totally can. In fact, this weapon is not bad for it either. So, let's... Oh, no, that's so bad. <laughs> 
It's like bouncing all over. I'm a ping pong ball. Let's go back down. Pinball ball? Is that what I was trying to say? Pinball ball. Why did I say ping pong ball? That's that's not what I was trying to say. I can't think while I'm being chased by angry little mouths. Kind of like being a dad, honestly. Okay. Uh, okay. Don't get hit again. Zen, keep it together. I'm not doing any damage to the boss because I'm just killing mouths. <laughs> We fly. The, the problem is they do respawn, so it's not like you could just like indefinitely attack these things and be okay. Like, oh crap. Oh my goodness. I've got so little health. I, I don't. I gotta go back the other direction. That's not gonna work. The way the boss is moving, I'm gonna just get caught out. So I'm trying to be like persistent on how I use this weapon here, but it's just not working compared to the other one. All right. It worked in the first phase. In the second phase, I'm gonna have to swap it. Okay, I took <laughs> I took a calm potion because I was tired of all the crap spawning here. In fact, I mean, look at my health already. Like, I haven't even started the fight. I'm already dead. <laughs> it is ridiculous. It is ridiculous the amount of crap that I'm running into. But I can't quite make a, um, a spawn for the boss because I don't have enough moon glow. So either I kind of fight my way through the jungle for a bit, trying to find Moonglow, which I've honestly been trying to do for a little bit here, just not being able to get anything. Um, or I just kind of deal with it and, and use this natural spawn that's like right below where our arena is. I say right below, it's it's close enough. It's not, it's not that close. <laughs> so let's, let's try it, let's try it. Let's just, um, oh, I still don't have full health. My Goodness, it's so freaking annoying. All right, let's go back real quick. Let's heal up. Let's go back over. This again. This goes back to the the thing I hate about the jungle is just this ridiculousness that happens. Even with a calm potion, like there was so much crap that I was fighting. So without it, it was even worse. And I totally forgot to use my armor on the last uh, boss fight. Like I need to use that stupid armor thing. And maybe that's a, a a you know I like the armor. I think the effect is really cool but maybe that's a argument for using the turtle stuff is that I'm just I'm just not remembering to use it so at this point like this armor is kind of dead weight if I had wow that was weird uh, I, was, I don't understand why it like dashed me back and forth um, if I had oh my goodness with these stupid things you break you because I'm just gonna run into that again um, if I had I don't know anything else to to use that was good but also wasn't like yeah causing all these issues i don't know maybe maybe it would be better uh where is the boss just down over there so i'm getting hit by oh that's right i think plantera's projectiles go through the yeah they do they go through stuff i forgot about that i don't know if that was always been the case or if that's new but it's annoying regardless oh my goodness i literally ran right into that can you believe it? Yes, you can. You've been watching me do boss fights for a while now. You can believe it. <laughs> All right, what do we want to do here? Um, let's pop this to begin with. And try to kill the boss. It's not doing anything because the boss is way down there. And I never buffed with this or anything else for that matter. So let's go do that. I mostly didn't buff until we got to the arena because I didn't want to waste um, all my buffs if I was just going to die. But let's do that. But I also had forgotten, you know, so there's a double whammy there. <laughs> I did it with an intention and then I forgot why my intention was there to begin with. I think for the first phase, I'm going to keep up with, actually, no, I'm just going to use this weapon. It's just too good. It's really good for getting the boss to, to run into your stuff. If the boss wants to run into your stuff at the moment, Plantera ain't having none of it. She doesn't want to fight me. She's trying to avoid me, which, you know, to be honest, I, I get it. I, I'm, I'm a scary guy with robots. I get it. Um, almost done on the cooldown for this particular ability, but I'm wondering if I want to save it for phase two. Now, I think I think we go ahead and use it and push in to the next phase while trying to attempt to not take any damage while keeping the boss in one little tiny spot so our weapon actually is doing useful things. And then I think we use the armor ability when we get to the very last part. If it's, if it's up by then. It, it may not be something to consider maybe a little quicker about how i'm rotating the boss i also need to aim up just a tiny bit when i'm going around like that so the thing is actually running into the boss the projectile that i'm firing 
Otherwise, it's not really doing a whole lot, you know? So let's move the boss down this way. Up and over. Woo! Just threading the needle there. There, rather. Can't talk. Trying to go back this way. Okay, the potion actually helped with that, the Inferno potion thing. I think I'm gonna go down. The boss is tracking me. I don't like when that happens. All right, here we go. Buff up with that. Get some extra DPS in as I totally miss the boss constantly. You know, if I'm not gonna actually hit the boss, the other weapon is better. <laughs> I think that's the conclusion here. But I'm playing better, so that's the thing. Oh, I do not wanna go like this. Oh no. Okay, okay, we're good. We're good, everybody's fine, everybody's fine. Get away from the boss if I can. I, I took, um, another thing I changed, which I didn't mention and I forgot to mention, is I used the Brewer, is that the name of the NPC? From Alchemist NPC, that does the combo potions. So I think one of them has like the don't knock me back potion, but I'm not sure. But I am using the combinations, which is basically just all the vanilla stuff, because there are no like modded combination potions for modern redemption. Um, with this particular Alchemist NPC update. So, yeah, we did it. We finally did it. That was, um, that took longer than it should have. <laughs> Let's go back. A new Omega prototype can be called using the Omega transmitter. Screams are heard in the dungeon. Uh, Plantera's been defeated. All that nonsense. I need to put a new layer down below here, which I will do. Let's open this up and hope for something good. No, I got the thorn hook, which actually... It's okay. I think I like the dual hook a little bit more. I don't know. We'll use the thorn hook, I guess. Got the pygmy staff. I mean, I like our little hologram guy. Uh, we got some a vanity, which, well, I think I could just sell. Huh. Is this actually going to go for anything? I guess it does. Look, we can get some money off of that. Uh, we even sell the, the, the dye. Got to hold on to those potions. Plantera mask. We'll just get rid of that. Spore sack. I don't know if I want that or not. Um, I think maybe I do if it does poison damage. If like the, if it counts as poison to to enable these poison bonus weapons, maybe I maybe I hold on to that. We'll get rid of the leaf blower. I'm not gonna use that. We got 52 gold to dump into our our stash here. Okay. Well, now that we've done that, next up could be. Honestly, I really don't know. First Omega prototype? We could try that now that we got that unlocked and then do Golem after all of the events and everything. I think maybe we do that in the next episode. That'd be pretty fun. <sighs> I don't know. I thought I thought I was going to kill Plantera faster than that. Now I'm debating whether or not I'm actually good at Terraria. 